Hi, I'm Brittany Rizzo, and welcome back to My Only Friends. On today's episode, I talk with Saint Heart. Indigenous performer Saint Heart left her home of Austin, Texas for Los Angeles to pursue her career in acting and music. Since moving to Los Angeles, Saint has taken the industry by storm. She broke into the music scene when she was signed to Universal Music Group and has since toured 12 states. Saint has also graced our screens with her notable roles in hit series such as Babylon, Daisy Jones and the Six, and The Offer, as well as thriller sci-fi movies Panic, Wicked Game, Another Way to Die, and Alien Storm opposite Tom Arnold and Kevin Sorbo. Saint and I really hit it off talking all things 90s and our love for our dogs. We both have pillows with our dogs' faces on them. Since this interview, my dog and best friend has passed away. Maxi was my world, and it's been an incredibly difficult couple of weeks. I knew that putting out this episode where we talk about how much we love our dogs would bring some comfort. Saint and I talk about how the song You'll Be In My Heart from the Tarzan soundtrack always makes us cry because it reminds us of our pets. If you're listening, hold your pup a little tighter today and go for a walk in honor of my Maxi Jones. Please enjoy my interview with Saint Hart. You look very comfy. (laughs) (laughs) How are you? It's nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you too, Brittany. I'm good. Just waking up, morning coffee, you know how it is. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I have been listening to your music and watching your videos. And I want to know like how you got started in the music industry. So, um... Ever since I was little, I had the dream to be like a performer and I was doing modeling in Austin, which is where I'm from. And I was just one day I was just like, I got to get out of here. I got to do something with my life. I got to I got to be somebody. So um, I just packed up my bags and I I moved with like two thousand dollars in my pocket. And that was like 11 years ago. So I'm still here pursuing my dreams and a lot I've accomplished. Um, there's so much more I have to do, but, uh, yeah, I'm just thankful I made that move, you know? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 30. Okay. So, wow. Yeah. We were, I, I would say I was like, I was like 18 or 19 when I first moved here too. Yeah. You have to do it. Where are you yeah. from? I'm from Las Vegas originally. Okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. isn't it so wild that when you think about it though i'm like if somebody told me to like move across like well i didn't move across country but if somebody told me to move anywhere new right now i'd be like i'm not doing that like we have this like weird unwavered bravery and like courage when we're young because we don't know any better right exactly it's true (laughs) (laughs) like if somebody was like yeah leave everything you have right now and pack up your bags and go live in New York. I'd be like, no, I can't do that. There's no way. <laughs> Especially since like LA is now my home. Like mm-hmm. I, I, my, my family's in Texas and Tennessee and my mom's, my mom kind of moved over there during COVID. And I was, every time I go to visit Tennessee, it's great. Nashville's fun, but I don't know anybody. It's like, it's mm-hmm. not my hometown. Like I can't go back and see all my friends, you know? So, right. um, but uh, my mom wants me to move to Nashville so bad. And I'm like, I can't leave LA. I love the ocean. I love the yeah. weather. I love, you know, just being in the entertainment business over here. It's mm-hmm. you have to be here to mm-hmm. do this, you know? Yeah. So. And I'm sure like, and you've established like your friendships here and everything like that, which is another testament to being young. I mean, I remember I was doing like open mics and you know, I don't drink anymore, but when I did drink, I would just like walk into a bar. And that's how I met one of my girlfriends who actually did the theme song to this podcast, Amanda Gunnels. And I literally just like walked right up to her and I was like, you seem cool. Do you want to be friends? And then <laughs> we were just friends. We're like, now, yeah. I don't think I would do that as an adult. <laughs> like, Yeah, that's true. I mean, we were fearless when you were young, like you were saying. Yeah. So and so you made the move from Texas to Los Angeles and was it kind of like, was it everything you dreamed of or were you like, wow, this is, you know, cause I know for me, I moved out here after booking one job and I was like, oh, I'm going to be working the rest of my life and it's going to be so easy. And then you're like, um, okay, wait, what am I doing? Like what's happening? That's, that's exactly what happened. I thought I would get discovered immediately. You know, you come out here, 
I've worked with a really like jerk producer and um you know he he degraded me and I was so young and uh he was trying to take advantage of me mm-hmm. he offered me a contract to get like plastic surgery <gasps> and sing about sexual content like this was this was crazy it's so young so new so green they take advantage of you when you're green 100 mm-hmm. percent and um I would I would say the the first month I was scared and I didn't know how I was gonna afford anything and and uh I booked some modeling jobs uh for a cosmetic company here so I was like okay that's cool so we're gonna be able to like go on with that I was still trying to make my way into music met that crappy producer um I was kind of jaded I wanted to go back home I was like if this is what LA is I don't know you know what to do but then I, I brought my dog back over. She passed away in 2021, but I'm she so was sorry. my only family here. Mm-hmm. And actually, this is her right here. Oh, what was her name? Star. Star. Oh. Yes, she was so my baby. Cute. So cute. Um, she sleeps with me every night still. Um, but uh, I have a pillow with my, have- my dogs, too. <laughs> You do? <laughs> they're oh. still they're still alive, but they're in Las Vegas. But they're gonna be sixteen this year. And so my grandma made me a little pillow. They're two cocker spaniels and I'm with them every night. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That makes me so happy. Yeah. So if it wasn't for her, um, I wouldn't have been able to come back here. And mm-hmm. uh I got a good job when I when I came back from from Austin uh, because I was told everybody I think I'm just going to come back because you know the music business is kind of shady and this and came back got a job working for a fashion designer and getting paid really good money and I was just going out and networking people um for a couple months and then I went to this one uh red carpet I don't remember where it was but my current manager was there with like 16 of his clients and they were all beautiful women. And I was like, Oh, that guy looks like, you know, he's somebody. So I w- went up to him and I was like, so what do you do? Like, just yeah. cause I was wondering. And he's like, I'm a talent manager. And I said, really? I said, well, I'm a singer. He goes, well, do you have a demo? I said, no. <laughs> and he's like, okay, how am I going to hear you sing? I said, I'll sing for you in your ear right now. Like I was Good just like, you. let me sing for you right there. And yeah. actually a lot of the connections that I made, in the music industry was that way. We just prove the talent, prove that you can do it. No fear, just go for it. And um, I've met a really top producer, Andrew Lane, that way. Um, uh, but uh, he worked with Aaliyah and Timberland and a whole bunch of mm-hmm. other artists. I met him that way. Because if you show that you have the talent and no fear, you know, they're like, okay, well, she's got something, you know? And then when you get in the studio, it's a whole nother magical thing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's wild like i um just remember like when people it's interesting when it's like out here you have the bravery to do that again it's something about being young and being in la but when i was growing up i I sang also and people would put me on the spot to sing and i'd be like no like i hated doing that did your friends do that to you all the time where they're like all the time she could sing she could sing sing for them and you're like no i don't (laughs) know especially if my boyfriend at the time was in the room, there was no way in hell that I was going to sing. Like <laughs> I was, I'm still to this day shy in front of, you know, a, a, a guy that I like or something. I'm like, Oh, I don't want to do this. Like mm-hmm. it gets shy. I don't know why, but I'm so, I'm so open to it. Open to the public and so good at it. But when it comes to like people that I like, I'm like, Oh, I get so nervous still yeah. to this day. I get nervous, but that's cool. You're a singer. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's interesting how it's like, if you're in a small group of people that, you know, you're like, I don't want to do this, but put me in front of thousands of people. I don't know. I don't care. No problem. It's like, what exactly. is that? Isn't what is that, that so weird? It's so strange. <laughs> Maybe it's cause it's like, we have to hear their opinion later or like, we don't want them to be like judging us like because we care about their opinion when it's like all these strangers you're like eh, i don't care that's so true that's <laughs> so true <laughs> what are some of um your musical influences like who were the artists that you listened to growing up that really inspired you um well i really like mariah carey mm. um britney spears christina aguilera um lady gaga i mean Cher, like all of them i mm-hmm. i love Cher and gaga because i kind of like relate to them on like 
wearing the wigs and changing the constant look like I, on the red carpet I always change my look and everyone's like never know what I'm gonna wear and I think it's just so much fun as an artist and also you know just expressing yourself through changing your mm -hmm. hair one day it makes you feel like I don't know like different I can't explain it I probably own five like five 500 wigs maybe I mean That's I own amazing. so I I have like a wig closet like it's crazy and like share like how she has a wig closet I have a wig closet as well so um Maybe 500 is exaggerating, but I would say like 150, you know, it's like. <laughs> That's amazing. What, um, when you say Christina Aguilera, I like the Stripped album is one of my favorite albums of all time. That yes, album. A, yes. It is like, if you're having a bad day or a good day or whatever, like that album is surely to help you through it. I just, I love that album so much. I agree. I agree. That's when she got out of her like little vibe and she just broke out and was herself and i thought it was so cool i mean to bring this way back to the 90s who are you choosing britney or christina who was your girl mm, so vocally it's christina but performance wise it was britney so yeah it's a tough one right there i know if you were to say in sync or braxy boys would say in sync all day every day <gasps> oh my gosh but... it makes me so happy <laughs> <laughs> i literally have like in sync coasters and like i love NSYNC so much like they are oh my I did was you so, see their comeback I was so upset that I was not at that concert like I literally yeah. couldn't sleep I because I had signed up to get those Justin Timberlake tickets because it was like a first come first serve type of thing and I didn't get them but I was like oh it's fine I've been traveling all day and like I work in the morning it's fine wasn't meant to be then as I'm going to bed I see all these videos of NSYNC there and I was pissed. Like I- Cause it's I, Vegas, right? That's where it was, right, Vegas? No, it was in LA. Like oh, 20 minutes. Here? Yeah, 20 minutes from my apartment. And I, it felt wow. personal. Like it felt truly personal. I was like, how <laughs> could you guys do that without me? Like I was so mad. I was texting my mom. I was like, this is bullshit. Like I was so, I was like a little kid again, like feeling like I lost the radio contest or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing who was your favorite of course justin of course of course i know it's still i mean i'm i'm really it, it's like the britney and justin thing now it's like oh yeah it's, it, it's hard it, it, it's heartbreaking yeah but um yeah. i'm not a fan of his latest video did you see no angels music video <sighs> I haven't seen it. I've, I've listened to his new album. I'm going to his show on the 10th in Vegas of, of like his new tour. And I'm like, okay, I really have to start listening to this new album. So I don't look like, you know, the yeah. old, the old, <laughs> the elder millennial who just knows like the hits from 10 years ago. But there's, there's maybe like four or five songs on the album that I really like, but I think, and you can tell me your opinion on like what makes an artist have longevity as well. But like I'm a big Swifty, very big Swifty. And I think why she's so incredible and relatable is because she's growing with her fans. Like she's not trying to recreate you belong with me for the 20th time, 10 years later. And it kind yeah. of feels like all these artists that we grew up with are just trying to recreate the same lightning in a bottle and it's not working. And it's like, it's okay to age. It's okay to grow and not put out a dance club mix anymore. Like, right, right. For me, I'm like, give me an acoustic album, Katy Perry. Like, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear like stripped down acoustic album. And like, same with Christina Aguilera or Justin Timberlake or these, you know, J Lo. I'm like, get, get to who you are now, not, you know, just trying to stay relevant. Yeah, I agree completely with you. And I think um, Taylor Swift's also very consistent. Like she doesn't mm -hmm. just like throw her fans for a crazy loop, like you said, like she's growing with them. So mm -hmm. um, I know Justin's new album, there's a few songs that I like, except this, you know, this new video that I saw called No No Angels. Mm -hmm. It was very demonic, very mm -hmm. demonic, like orgy, like with blood and a club. And it was what? Just like, I didn't see yeah. it. Oh. it's crazy look at that video like I was I was like whoa I don't know if I could I continue to watch this I literally had to shut it off because like it just gave me bad vibes but um mm -hmm. you just never know like people sell out to do whatever mm -hmm. whatever they do but um 
Yeah, no, I was I was very disappointed a couple of days ago. I saw it. I was like, why, Justin? Mm-hmm. Why did you do this? His one song on the album that I like is it's called Alone and it's a ballad and it's just him and a piano. And I'm like, that's what I want to hear when it comes to you. OK, so describe what your sound is musically, because you have some really poppy songs and then you kind of have like this tribal pop vibe. So what do you say has influenced your sound the most? So when it comes to the tribal pop, it was a it was a Native American influence because my father is 10 percent Comanche Mm -hmm. and me and my manager were just trying to find a market for me. And we created our own sound. Um, I would say it's like Britney Spears, but with like Native American pop influence. Mm -hmm. Um, That's when I was with Universal and um, I'm no longer with them. I'm back to being independent. So I would just say my my sounds like top 40 pop like. would like uh Camila Cabello or or uh Rihanna or something like that I wouldn't say that I w- I'm doing the tribal pop anymore mm-hmm. because that's when I was with Universal but it was a lot of fun to write and create and and do the music videos I would go to the reservations and have the kids be in the music video and mm-hmm. I would have Native American dancers and fire dancers in my video it was just like really cool to incorporate the culture that I love to put it in music it was it was Mm -hmm. a lot of fun Mm -hmm. and what would you so you said you were signed you were signed to a big record label and now you're and now you are independent Mm -hmm. so for the listener can you and for me is it better to be independent or like do you feel like you have more creative control over things or like did you find being with a big record label you got lost in the mix with other artists i feel like they put me in one lane and i couldn't get out of that lane Mm -hmm. and i was performing at casinos and powwows and stuff like that they were making me that that native girl so Mm -hmm. it was just like Mm -hmm. i wanted more i wanted to be more universal so um during covid that's when they decided you know uh we have other artists we're going to sign, blah, 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 blah. And they gave me an ultimatum. They're like, if you get this many TikTok followers, it was all about TikTok. Like Ugh. at the be- like, like in COVID, it was all about TikTok. And I didn't get that protocol for that the followers. So they let me go and I was okay. But I was depressed at the time. But I randomly got a phone call. I would say it's God's rejection turning redirection because mm-hmm. that's when I started acting. Mm-hmm. And acting just took its own course. And I mean, God has put so many amazing roles already into my career. And it's been so, it's only been two years. So um, it's just the redirection that I I got from rejection. And I feel like, you know, if it doesn't work out in one thing, try another thing and just keep going. That's what I did. So. Right. And didn't all of Universal's music get pulled from TikTok anyway? Yes, that's I saw that and I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, no way. That's crazy. They're like, how's that working out for you now, guys? <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's crazy. Wow. Honestly, it's like, yeah, like you said, redirection is protection because it's like, okay, say you got all those followers and all your music would have been taken off of TikTok anyway. And yep. it would have all been for what? Like silent videos? <laughs> like, I'm that is, that's wild. And so- with acting, so you say you, that was your redirection into acting. What, what was the phone call? What was the first job that you got? What ignited that new passion? So, so the producer was interested in using one of my songs for their movie, but they also <laughs> said, you know, we really like your look. Um, we, we get like a Jennifer Lawrence type vibe with you. And, and I, I can was see like, that. Oh. I can see that. And I was like, that's cool. I was and they're like, can you act? I said, yeah, I can act not knowing anything about it. They threw me on set with the acting coach. Um, prior to that, I had certain sessions with the acting coach to prepare because I had to cry in the scene. And I've never done that on camera before, but I'm a performer. So I was like, this is a challenge. I'm up for it, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, I did it and I, I did it. OK. And I was I told my manager, I said, look, I said, I'm going to try this. Because like the acting coach was saying, you're a natural, just go for it. I ended up joining an um an acting class called Actors Hood, and I got I was in there for about a year, 
and then I studied, you know, the, 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 you know, the normal things about acting, about how you look at partner and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, um, I got discovered from a director in that class to be a lead in one of his films. So it's just about being prepared. I guess and and being in the right place at the right time and I feel like after that I didn't have to go back to class because I'm consistently working now like mm-hmm. I've done I've done like 25 films in in two two and two and a half years so it's like congratulations thank you thank you that's amazing so, so I think that was my redirection for a reason because I see the music industry now and it's just so messed up and so demonic and it's just like I don't know where I would fit in right now Mm -hmm. if I didn't sell out the way that other people did Mm. yeah yeah do you find that a different part of you is nourished when you're doing music versus acting definitely it's like part of like acting for me is a creative outlet being able to be different people and put your mindset in different different um characters but with singing it's like my soul is yeah yeah it's different it's like you feel like wow like like as we're gonna talk about you know um anxiety and stuff Mm -hmm. when I get anxiety if it's not if it's not like late at night or if I start having a panic attack I'll go in there and sing Mm -hmm. and it will calm me down because what's, what's the go-to song that you sing that you know is going to calm you down <laughs> christina aguilera hurt such a good song God, yes that, that album is amazing too yeah <laughs> it is it's so amazing oh so, that's a great yeah. one yeah i totally relate to that because it's interesting because you know my friend amanda would always say like i would be like i don't feel like listening to music lately like if i get like really sad or I have a lot going on like sometimes music brings up too much for me and she's like that's when you need to write the most like that's when you should be writing and like drawing from that and what what is like the perfect environment for you to what's an essential environment for you to create in order to get that creativity going I don't need anything fancy I don't need to be on a beach or anything I just need a good bathroom with like acoustics and my pen and paper and then just sing and just Mm -hmm. write and create a song and then after that you call up um you call up the producer and you're like hey I have this melody let's get in the studio and write something and Mm -hmm. it usually just starts with just me being alone in a room hold on my mom's calling me (laughs) let me send her the voicemail my mom's my bff um but uh, it really just starts with me being alone in a room with an idea and that's it. I mean, I don't have to have like a perfect place wherever it hits me. It hits me, you know, mm-hmm. do you find you come with, up with the melody first first or is it the lyrics first? And then you're like, OK, how can I turn this into a song? Lyrics first, for sure. Lyrics. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Now, when you talk about having anxiety, do you where do you think your anxiety stems from? Is it? directed towards like feeling like you have to constantly be working in this industry or just you know personal life I would say both I mean Mm -hmm. um last year was really difficult for me because my mom she was going through a lot of health issues with COPD Mm -hmm. and um she was in Tennessee so so I was flying back and forth not to mention the strike was happening um, my manager was going through health problems and I thought I was going to lose him too. So last year was really extremely like painful for me, but everything worked out good in the end. Thank God mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. But um, I would say personal life and also being overwhelmed with things like, especially being an actor, you get like four or five auditions you have to submit by a certain time and they're all different characters. And then you right. have a project that you have to do. And it's just like, that is okay with me as long as I just calm down and take my time and look at each thing and look at each thing, which is priority. And, um, I think I just get anxiety from being overwhelmed sometimes. Saint, when you do find yourself kind of losing your drive or spark a little bit, what is, what is something that helps you get back to yourself and helps reignite it? Um, listening to music, Mm -hmm. You know, 
it, it all goes down to music because it's like I'll put on, you know, my favorite Christian song and I'll listen to that and listen to praise and worship and that will get me back into my vibe and and my my positive energy and also going for a walk next to the ocean like that's the key thing for me because being next to the ocean I didn't grow up with that I'm from mm -hmm. Texas so I'm used to heat and barbecue and all this stuff so when yeah. you come here it's like you're next to the ocean the sea breeze it's such a beautiful feeling that I've never ever had until I moved here right. so and I'm very fortunate to um live in Santa Monica so I can literally walk to the ocean if I wanted to so I do that constantly if I if I if I end up like having a stressful day I'll I'll go for a walk and just like clear my head with meditation music or something mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and growing up in Texas did you feel kind of like an outsider like did you feel like you always had this like creative bug and you weren't really surrounded by that yeah uh, that's why I was like I gotta get out of here I gotta change my life because I knew that I had I had plans I was like drawn to spotlight so I was just like ready to go like I'm like I see something else and like my friends, they were all partying and they're all like models and all that. Now they're all moms. And it's like, <laughs> it's yeah. like I'm still doing the thing. And they're like, yeah. they're still going. They're like the biggest supporters ever though. So it's yeah. like, but it, yeah, it, it takes that, that drive. And if you have young supporters out there that are, you know, thinking about going to pursue their dreams and leaving their hometown, do it. Mm -hmm. do it mm -hmm. I dare you you right. know what I mean I dare you it's yeah like when, when people reach out to me and they're like oh I have a niece that wants to do this and I'm like she just has to do it and like it's funny how you, you said you know I that you know they're all moms now and stuff it's like when I go home to Las Vegas I feel like wow I have done nothing because all these people have houses and they're married with children which is it's not what I want though but I it makes you go like well, am I behind in life or like, should I be doing this? And you feel like such an outsider, but then you come back to LA and you're like, oh my God, everybody, like, no, everybody here is like gig to gig, just onto the next thing and focused on whatever industry, like avenue of the industry that they're in. And you're like, yeah, we're all kind of the same here. Nobody I know here owns a big ass house and is married with right. three children, like literally nobody I know here. So then you're like, oh, okay, I'm not behind. Like it's, it's no, all just you about your in. environment. You fit in perfectly yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I blend in, like I am, you know, everything is, everyone is literally going through what we're going through out here. Cause everybody is just still, because that's the thing, you know, this isn't like, well at least for me it wasn't like okay if i don't make it quote unquote in five years then i'll move back home like no this is for life like i'm playing the long game like if you don't give up you're gonna make it whatever that means to you that's just that's my mentality yep i agree with you completely now we're, we're was, part of that circle we know uh -huh. we know you're right exactly. like we go home and we're like uh chuck e cheese that's where you want to go i mean <laughs> Yeah. And they're like, can I bring my kid? I'm like, do you have to? <laughs> exactly. Mm, do you have a dog? Your dog could come. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> That's so funny. Now, what was the first time you were watching a TV show or a movie that you saw yourself in a character? Um, well, uh, I love the movie uh, Walk to Remember. Mm. And I think me watching Mandy Moore perform Only Hope was like life changing for me. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. my God, I want to do that. Yeah. And I actually did that. And I won in the talent show in my school. That's amazing. So that, so that changed my life. I was like, OK. And I was super nervous about performing it. I, the videotape is somewhere. Someone has it. So that's just like hilarious. I want to see it. But um, I would say, you know, watching like Full House, like I always wanted a family like that. Like my family is very like do their own thing. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. um, and he uh, and they um, they weren't very like like nurturing like that. They all were busy with their work and stuff like that. So me watching Full House, I wanted a family like that, like so mm. bad. That's really sweet. And I first I also cry from the the walk to remember soundtrack that was like my audition song my all of my 
childhood. Yes, like, that's that amazing. was that was the song where people were like, okay, like come in and sing, and it was always "Cry" by Mandy Moore. I sang that song at every friggin' talent show possible, and that's that awesome. sa- that soundtrack alone is like I still listen to it. It's one of my favorite soundtracks ever. That, that and the Tarzan soundtrack. <laughs> I love Tarzan. Oh, you know, like you'll be in my heart. Like that song makes me cry, cry. so much. Yeah. It makes me think about my her. dog. Yes, it makes me, me too. Oh my <laughs> god. That's crazy. Like sometimes I'm like, I can't, it'll come on my shuffle and I'm like, not today. I I cannot cry I, right like, now. If I have to cry in a scene, I will go in the bathroom and listen to that song and think about my dog. Oh my gosh. That is so amazing because I always think I'm like, when I hear like really incredible love songs, I'm never thinking of a person. I'm thinking of my dogs. This is my pillow. <laughs> These are my girls. Oh, <laughs> that's Lila so and that's Maxie. <laughs> so <laughs> cute. Oh, I love Hello. that. Oh my gosh. That's so funny you said that. Yeah, you'll be in my heart. That song, oh my gosh, destroys me. <laughs> Same here. Like, that's so crazy. And even a walk to remember, every time I watch it, I know exactly what's gonna happen. And I'm sitting there sobbing. And that's like any Nicholas Sparks movie though. Like I was there's a place called Josephine Nail Spa in Studio City. And they play movies while you get your nails done. And they were playing the last song. And I'm like, I have seen this movie before and I'm sitting there getting my nails done and like tears just streaming <laughs> down my face. I'm like, why would you guys choose to play this right now? Like, this is not a happy movie. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there like a character that you channel in your hard times where you're like, oh, I need to be a, I need to really kick things into gear right now or like put on a brave face? Like what character was that for you? I mean, Sailor Moon, I guess. But... Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, my god. Like, gosh. Sailor Moon was such a badass. Like, she can do anything, but yet she, like, played stupid, but she's not stupid. You know, she knows the world. So I feel like Sailor Moon and me relate that way. That's amazing. And you, <laughs> and also, you had also said Buffy. Buffy, yeah. Buffy was big for me, too. Yeah. And Angel the- was like my first true crush. I was like, oh my God, he's so hot. That's like- so funny. Yeah, I remember my dad watching that a lot growing up. And I was always just like so scared. And part of me was like, <laughs> part of me was like, well, is it not as scary as an adult? Like, is it just cheesy? And I went to watch it last night and I was like, nope, I'm not watching this. I was too scared. It is kind of <laughs> scary. I mean, legit, like the makeup was done very well, like very well. Mm hmm. And Buffy was just like a complete feminist icon. Like she was such a badass, like yeah, amazing, she was. amazing. Yeah. And then you had also um, mentioned Boy Meets World, which is like one of my top shows ever. And <laughs> is there a specific episode of Boy Meets World that just like really sticks out for you? Well, when like Sean was crushing on Topanga, I mean, like the whole time they had like this sexual chemistry vibe and Corey was so like nonchalant about it. Like he had no idea. I mean, I would, I see Topanga with Sean anyways, you know? Really? I guess. I mean, yeah, they, they, they do fit together. I mean, cause Sean is more like that bad boy and she's the good girl. Like it would just make sense for them. Like Angela and Corey seem like they would be a better couple together interesting interesting there was an episode that angela was crushing on Corey. i remember that or was it that sh- that he just was i think he i think so and think she's like you're a great guy and this and that but i'm i'm with sean like i kind of remember that like it, like that shit is so real because you think about high school and like the the the, the situations that we were in we were mm-hmm. literally living that show Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know. God, like, oh, I have a crush on her and I want to talk to her. And, and 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 I'm like, oh my God, he's so cute. I want to talk to him. And like, like it it's not like that anymore. It's just not. You don't have that that type of relationship anymore. It's all about, you know, social media, who you're yeah. looking at online. And yeah. I, I don't know. I think we're very blessed to be in the generation we were in for sure. I know. And like writing notes to each other in high school. Like I still have like a drawer back home of like notes that people like pass to me during class. And it's like we just kind of I mean, because we're like the last generation to experience life pre-internet and with internet. Right. So 
I feel I do feel bad for the kids now where everything is so social media based and like it just all feels very inauthentic and right you're, you're you're being robbed of like what's really out there like even you know when I got older and out here I was nannying kids and stuff and I would be like wait you guys don't like go ride your bikes after school or like watch tv <laughs> Like there was like yeah. no TV time, no iPad time, no, and like they just like stare at all these activities that their parents fill their plate with, and I'm like, they're not kids anymore. Like, no, like, get home from school, turn on TRL, make a pop tart or top ramen, and then we go ride our bikes until our parents were like, okay, it's dark outside, you need to come home, and then do it all again. And so it is, it's wild that as you know, time goes on, we just see these kids lose more and more of their inner child. But then when we get to this age, all we're trying to do is nurture our inner child. Yeah, it's so true. It's so crazy. And it wasn't as dangerous. I mean, mm -hmm. now it's like way dangerous for kids to be out by themselves. And yeah, stuff. but yeah, like, man, my childhood was I, I just remember just like, playing like hide and seek and but that shit doesn't even exist anymore like who does that you know what I mean? right yeah it's so true what is your relationship to social media now especially since with that record company they released you because of social media um I, I have a love-hate relationship um I love it because I can post who I am who I want to be um what I'm doing uh, and you know, either you like it or don't like it or whatever, have an opinion. I don't like it because I get insecure on it. Sometimes I'm thinking mm -hmm. I should be perfect. I should look like this and I should look like, you know, Megan Fox, she's perfect. And it's like, should I go get, you know, like a, you know, surgery or something to look yeah. like that. But it's just like, it's all smoke and mirrors. And I got to tell myself, you know, I am perfect the way that I am. So it's like, uh, it's a love hate relationship, but um, I do encourage anybody that's in the entertainment business to get one because it's the way to connect with your fans and it shows you're relevant, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had like a really, <coughs> excuse me, have you ever had um, an encounter with a fan through social media that was really meaningful to you? Um, yeah. So one of my fans, uh, a Native American fan actually invited me to her wedding as her bridesmaid, oh. which is crazy. I couldn't make it because I was on set, but I did send flowers to her saying thank you for the invitation. That's really sweet. Yeah. And so what are you working on now? Um, so I'm meeting with new music producers because I really want to get back into my music. Just I just want to put out like a single at least this year if I have to if it's just one thing usually it would be an album but who does albums now it's all about yeah. being a single it's like albums are non-existent anymore but um I'm working on a few movies uh, I have about five movies that I'm going to be doing this year so I'm pretty busy with that um like horror movies and then there's a, a period piece and then there's a like Blair Witch type project movie mm -hmm. I'm doing um I have auditions that I've been auditioning for a really big one that I recently did massive. If, if I get this role, it'll be like life changing. So we're just praying for that, but just consistently auditioning and networking. Mm -hmm. Networking is key. Cause like, if you're sitting at home doing nothing, no one, not, no one's going to know who you are. You got to go out there and meet everybody as much as you can. It's mm -hmm. exhausting, but it works, you know? <laughs> yeah. Who is your dream collaborator, whether it be musically or in TV and film? Um, I love Bruno Mars. Mm. Um, and then in film, I would love to collaborate with like Evan Peters. I think he's a phenomenal actor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just think he can pull off anything. He's like the new generation of Johnny Depp, I think. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, he's yeah. great. He's great. He, it's funny. He like is also the epitome of like, just keep at it. Cause I don't know if you ever watched parenthood, which is another one of my favorite shows, but he had like, he did like an under five on that show. Like he really just like climbed the ladder and kept going and like got massive, literally massive. Yeah. 
So it's, it's, I always love when I, especially like going back and watching Boy Meets World and then you see all the people who are like still working to this day, like Linda Cardellini, you're like, oh my God, you broke up Corey and Topanga and I hated you so much for like, <laughs> like I took it so personal. I hated her so much. And then Dead to Me came out and I'm like, oh my God, that's the girl who broke up Corey and Topanga. Yeah. <laughs> So true. That was a crazy show. I love that show. I love that show. Christina Applegate is incredible in that show. But yeah, so it is fun to like see how, you know, if you keep at it and you keep going, then yeah, like it's gonna, it's gonna happen eventually. Yeah. What has been one of the most rewarding experiences in your career thus far? Um, you know, I just, I, sometimes I receive messages from people saying, oh, you've inspired me you mm -hmm. know to act you've inspired me to write this song or or they would send me something that they did and be like this is because you 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 inspire me for this i think that being an inspiration for other people is probably the most rewarding thing because you're changing lives and you don't even know it you know until like they do something in their life and they're like because like britney spears changed my life when i and chris angular when i saw genie in the bottle i was like i want to do that like that's mm -hmm. what i want to do and if it wasn't for them inspiring me, I wouldn't be here. So if I am inspiring someone in some kind of way, I'm just very thankful and grateful for that as well. Cause you change lives, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget the first time I saw Britney Spears and baby one more time. I was literally in my, like we called it our toy room growing up and I was on the computer and AOL had just come out. <laughs> and there was like on the home page where, you know, you've got mail and there was a little video of baby one more time going off. And I was like, mom, 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 come here, come here, come here. I was like, her name's Brittany too. And I thought it was like the most amazing thing in the world. And I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that. And then I remember we went and saw in sync and she opened up for them. And I was like, mom, it's the girl from AOL. Like I was freaking out, but it That's truly amazing. was like, that was my moment where I was like, I want to do this. Oh my gosh. Like that is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. And like all the Disney channel concert series that would come out of like, Britney Spears and Christina and in sync, it was like, oh my God, I need to be doing this too. Like I want to be singing at Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And TRL again, like you see mm -hmm. the TRL, you're like, oh my God, I want to be on that too, but they don't have that anymore. That was I know. such a vibe. It was such a vibe. I MTV, I'm like, they don't even play like I loved watching making the video, like those all those shows and like just playing music videos all day long. Like you knew in the mornings they were going to be playing music videos all day long. It's crazy how thinking about this time, like I can, I can almost smell it and I can like taste like I would literally have a cherry frosted pop tart all the time while watching TRL. And I'm like, I'm craving one right now. <laughs> I'm like, this just is all so very nostalgic and I love it. Yes. And Hot Pockets. I love those fucking things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Honestly, as an adult, Hot Pockets are so good. <laughs> or Uncrustables. I'm all about convenience as I get older. I'm like, if I could thaw it out or put it in a microwave, I'm eating it. <laughs> <laughs> and what were the mini, what is it called? Those pizza rolls. Pizza rolls. That's what mm. I would, that was like my to go to things. I would love pizza rolls. That's so funny. That's amazing. I haven't had pizza rolls in so long, actually. I like I don't even remember what they taste like, to be honest. Like probably like not good. I was just having this conversation because <laughs> I, I don't drink. And someone was like, Oh, so you're like the best person to gauge if like a happy hour is really good because most people are like they're drunk and they just want food. So they're like, Oh yeah, this is great. Where I'm like, mm -mm, this doesn't taste very good at all. And there's so <laughs> many, like I went, like there's meals where I've literally had them as an adult who or sober. And you're like, Oh God, like this was literally only good because one couldn't afford anything else or two, I was blocked out drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you got the good taste buds. That's good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, before you go, I want to ask, what is the best piece of advice that you have gotten in this industry, whether it be for your career or for your mental health? I would say if you have a dream, go for it because no one else is going to do it except you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I call my fans, I've been calling my fans dreamers for the longest time since I started. So, um, you know, because everyone has a dream, right? 
but it's like you're the only one that could truly make that happen and no dream is impossible because I mean if you look at you know anybody that inspires you they started where you're at mm -hmm. so just go for it and 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 just don't get discouraged and if you do get rejected it's protection like you said um just keep going for it because if you give up, you're going to be like, oh, what if I would have done that? And you didn't and you gave up and that person that you knew did it. And you're like, oh, that could be me. Right. Don't ever be like a shoulda, coulda, won a person because it's like you'll regret it for the rest of your life. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, my my therapist always says, because I'll, I'll be like, you know, I feel like I failed. Like I. I'm this age and I haven't done this and I feel like I failed. And she always says, have you given up? And I'm like, no, she's like, then you haven't failed. So just remembering that, like, as long as you keep going, you have not failed yet. And, you know, and looking for other people for, to, to find that ins inspiration, like, and you never know when inspiration is going to hit you. And like, even, you know, last night I was like, I need to kind of, I was in my soft girl era for a little bit for like the past couple of weeks. I don't know if it's like solar eclipse and mercury retrograde. And I was like, <laughs> I need to like tap into to some stronger energy here. And so last night I watched Darren Brockovich and I was like, hell yeah, yes. I feel great today. <laughs> yes, the great movie. Yes. Yeah. So it's it it is like I t I turn to movies and TV and music so much to find that inspiration when I do want to give up where I'm like, no, I can do this there's there's nothing like that i can't take on and like you watch these characters especially like strong female characters who go from like having nothing to having it all and just how they handle it gracefully and how tough they are and you're like okay i can do this too like it's totally fine yeah definitely well i feel the same energy with you that's for sure mm, i love that well it was so nice meeting you. I'm so excited to see what comes next for you. And wait, you also do hosting as well, correct? I I I have done hosting like during the strike. Um my friend, he has a like a network in uh Mexico and he's like, "You know, you you're kind of like good with people. You should try this." And he gave me the microphone and I was on the red carpet for an event and I was just like, "Okay, and then he started paying me and I'm like, OK, I was like and then the strike happened and I was like, how can I get out there still and network and and still meet people doing this? And I was doing red carpet hosting and I met Tim Burton, Gary, uh, Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro, like so many, uh, so many people um, and just networked and people knew me as a host and then come January this year I'm like I'm not hosting no more I'm back to being an actress it's like yeah they're like oh but can you host here like I just recently got an invite to host the dances with films film festival mm. so um I'm still debating if I'm gonna do it or not because I might be on set shooting a movie so it's like but mm -hmm. hosting is fun. You get to know people like, like, you know, you have your own show, you get to mm -hmm. know people, you get to relate to people yeah. and you make people feel good. Like you make me feel good. I'm very comfortable with you. I feel oh, like I know you. you. I feel like we went to high school together. I know. It honestly does. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why I love doing this podcast so much is because it's like, it is, it's like, I don't know when I don't know the person beforehand, I don't know how it's going to go. And like, it's two people being very vulnerable and, but present with one another, which like I said, like it, that doesn't happen anymore. And it does, you know, it's reminiscent of when I was 19 and had the balls to go up to a girl and be like, let's be friends. And now it's <laughs> like, well, I just got to spend the last hour with you and we are friends now. Like we connected and it's, yes. I, it's so hard to do that in this digital world anymore. Meanwhile, we're digital right now. I know it's, it's like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we probably live like 25 minutes from each other. <laughs> That's awesome. So well, what? it was very nice to meet you, Brittany, and thank, thank you for having you. me on your show. Yes, and, um, I can't wait to see it, hear it, and I'll post it and promote it. Whatever. Amazing, you want me to do. amazing. Now, what are some of your hobbies outside of the industry that keep you connected to yourself? Going for a walk on the beach, mm -hmm. um, going to church, as just um, being around friends. I love food. I love coffee. <laughs> but mostly most mostly the industry stuff like I wake up and work like that's what I do mm -hmm. but when I like have a, a chill day 
I like some um, Thai food. I love Thai food. It's like my favorite food. So it's like never had it. Wow. Really? <laughs> I know. And I really want to try it because I live next to that. Everybody goes to Anjak Thai. Like yeah. I, I live over there and I always see the longest line ever. And I'm like, what is everybody doing? And people are like floored that I've never been there. <laughs> well, we should change that. We should yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, have the best day. Take a nice walk on the beach. And yeah. I'm really excited for what's to come for you. It was so nice meeting you. Nice to meet you too, Brittany. You have a great day. You too. Bye.